cloak-shaped fighter is a Star Wars Expanded Universe fighter. It was introduced several decades before the Clone Wars as a tough space and atmospheric fighter. It made its first appearance in the comic series Dark Empire as one of the bounty hunter fighters that pursued the Millennium Falcon at Nar Shadda. It's made several appearances in other Expanded Universe canon, such as books, comics, and games since that time. The fighter is so common that it is used by many independent groups or individuals throughout the galaxy, but mostly by mercenaries, pirates, bounty hunters, and private militias. The cloak shape is a common sight in the fringe, outer rim, and hut space, particularly at the smuggler's moon, Nar Shadda. Although the statistics shown here denote a common configuration for these ships, no one cloak shape is exactly like any other. Kuat Systems Engineering designed them so that they could be heavily customized. By the time of the Battle of Yavin, it was almost impossible to find these fighters in their original configuration. I once had a guy come in here looking to buy an original cloak shape. I just laughed and told him that there is no such thing as an original cloak shape. <laughs> Relative to other fighters of its day, it was slow and heavy. It had a weak power plant, making it unsuitable for long-range, deep space missions. In an atmosphere, or even low orbit, it was very suitable in a defensive role, as it has both atmospheric engine nacelles and an engine for space travel. The vanes on the back were an aftermarket add-on to increase maneuverability, but by the time of the Battle of Yavin, this addition was so common that it was considered practically standard for every cloak shape. The cockpit had room for a pilot and co-pilot, although many were customized for a single pilot. The large fuselage meant room for additional storage or power plant upgrades. The standard energy weapons were two dual laser cannons on either side of the cockpit. These modular weapon hardpoints could be easily changed to accommodate a variety of other energy weapons, such as ion cannons. They also had two missile launchers, with ordnance carried inside the bulkier portion of the wings. This was usually concussion missiles. Of course, due to the cloak shape's durability, these ships can be used as an effective bomber. So proton torpedoes were another common weapon. The underside of the wings had attachments for even more weapons. Of course, adding more energy weapons would mean serious reductions in power and sacrifices in speed and performance, and may require a necessary power plant upgrade. Cloak shapes were not designed to be hyperdrive capable. However, a hyperdrive sled or a ring could easily remedy this. As stated before, these fighters were modified heavily to suit the needs of their owners. The cloak shape shown here is fairly average. However, during the Clone Wars, the Jedi Order used them as part of the White Cliff Squadron. If I were to use one of these fighters, perhaps as a mercenary or bounty hunter, I certainly would have my own customization preferences. First, the tired old look and color of this ship would have to be changed to something more dangerous and intimidating. Something more appropriate for the fringe or outer rim. Second, I know these ships would not be able to compete with other fighters in deep space for speed and maneuverability, so I would limit the use to places where it has an advantage, perhaps places like the upper atmosphere of Nar Shadda, where speed is not desired, but weaponry, toughness, and maneuverability are. I would immediately upgrade the maneuvering vanes to give it better performance while making tight turns, etc. Should I choose to take someone alive, having only laser cannons wouldn't be particularly useful, so I would replace one of the cannons with an ion cannon for disabling enemy ships. And since I cannot be troubled to maneuver or line up for a perfect shot, I would replace the other cannon with a Gatling laser turret. The use of this nasty weapon may require someone to ride along and operate weapons. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe to Lost Starships. Stay tuned for more ship presentations from Star Wars, Star Trek, and other universes.